Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover. And through my channel, I answer your questions and I share with you some tips and tricks and techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business. So I don't have a particular uh, singular question that I'm going to answer today. It's uh, I'm actually going to do another walkthrough of how to narrate an audiobook from start to finish. It's going to be a short version. I'm working on a course actually for uh, a full course on audiobook narration from start to finish because it's just too much information really to do, you know, to all the nuances for just a short uh, YouTube video. So today I'm going to give a short version of how to uh, narrate an audiobook from the standpoint of already having one. It's basically opening the book, opening your files, recording, uh, editing, that sort of thing. So let's get started. All right, so I already have a book that I'm going to use. It's a book that I have already narrated for a client. I've actually just started her second book for her, but this one has already been released. I've already narrated it, so I don't think it's going to be a problem if I use a chapter of it or a section of a chapter of it to demonstrate how to uh, open up a file and get started on uh, narrating an audiobook. And we're going to be talking about... Uh, editing this audiobook to comply with ACX's standards, uh, Audible. Uh, as you know, ACX standard is, ACX's standards is kind of the standard for audiobook narration, although there are a lot of other distributors for audiobooks, but the formatting is pretty much the same, if not exactly the same. Um, I think they're pretty much the same. So we're going to head over to my desktop and we're going to get started. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. This is the DAW that I use, your digital audio workstation. I use Adobe Audition. I started with Audacity, but it only took me a couple of months before I found Adobe Audition. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. The ease of use, um, it's just easier on the eye. There's Adobe Audition is very forgiving as well. There's a lot of different ways to go back and fix something if you mess something up. And it has a lot more compatibility with the compatibility with the plugins that are available as well, which are instrumental in saving you time, lots of time with edit, the editing process. Um, so we'll touch on those a little bit later. But first, let's start with a new fresh file. So for Adobe Audition, there's two ways to open a new file. I can grow, go up to File and click New Audio File, okay? The other way to open a new file is on your keyboard to select shift Control n for New File. So we're going to stick with this one here. So we're just going to do, I'm going to name this one Audiobook Test. Actually, no. Let's actually name this how I would if it were a real audiobook that I'm producing. Not that this is, isn't, but you know what I mean. So when I start an audiobook, I like to start my file names with numbers because the majority of the time I am narrating a book or producing an audiobook and then sending those files to the client. And then the client is going to upload them to ACX or wherever. So the numbers will indicate what order the files are in, so it makes it very easy for the client to figure out what, what file goes where. Because if you've ever worked with ACX before, you know that they have slots for each file in a row. So with the numbers, the client can easily tell which one goes where. So this one I'm going to call, let's just, let's just pretend this is the very first file. So for example, this would be 00, zero underscore the title of the book, and then I'm going to do underscore again. And then this will be what the file is for not only the client's ease of, you know, finding which file is what, but for me also when I'm, you know, finishing up with the editing and I know what files are what. 
So this one, the very first file, 00, zero for me is always going to be opening credits. Okay, and then so on and so forth. So the next file after the opening credits would be 01, the title, and then this section would be the introduction. Right? And then after that, for example, would be file 02, oops, 02, and then the title, and then this last section would be chapter one, and then so on down the line, you get the idea. Um, so I'm just going to leave it for this as for right now, this name, just so I know what this file is later, so I don't try to use it for something. So here we go. All right, now I have a fresh new audio file to record this audiobook to. So what I'm going to do is open uh, the section that I'm going to narrate. And I have a clicker, which is just a dog training clicker that I use to mark my mistakes. When you click it, let me show you my screen here. Let me minimize this. When you click it, there we go. There is a visual spike there that doesn't look like anything else other than maybe a sneeze or something. But that click, when I go back and edit it later, will show me where my mistake was. So as I'm narrating and I make a mistake, I hit the clicker and then it makes this visual spike here. That So as I'm narrating along and I make a mistake, I hit my clicker and it makes this visual little spike here. So it makes it easier for me to edit later. There is another way to record and edit, which is called punch and roll, which is basically this. Instead of hitting a clicker when you make a mistake, you actually stop the recording Go back to where you made the mistake and then re record it and re record it where you were. So that is punch and roll. That actually, let me stop this really quick while I'm jabbering at you. But punch and roll does save a lot of time with editing later. But for me, I choose to use the click method because I don't trust my brain to not go, you know, squirrel and then forget to stop and re record and. Not to mention that I don't, maybe I'm so focused on what I'm reading, maybe I don't hear a bell or the doorbell, you know, or a dog outside that barks that I didn't hear it while I was speaking. I just want to double check the file or my stomach growling. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> but I want to be able to go back through the file and just make sure that I don't miss anything or something that I can re-record if I mispronounce something. It's just a way for me to double check. So I don't do punch and roll because I don't trust myself. So I would much rather go back through the file again one more time just to make sure that everything is correct and no uh, extraneous sounds are in there that shouldn't be there. So enough with my talking. Let's get started. All right, I'm just going to delete all of this blah blah and hit record. Okay, let me grab my clicker. Chapter three, taking a break. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit of a pause here after the, the chapter title, but I will in post to make sure that there is a good second, second and a half worth of room tone between the chapter title and then the body of the rest of the chapter. So here we go. As a working mother, you usually don't have much time to pamper yourself. I'm going to read that again. As a working mother, you usually don't have much time to pamper yourself. There's always one more thing to do, one final email, one more load of laundry, a few more errands. When you strive to do everything, you can end up wearing yourself out. Funny thing is, you don't end up doing anything particularly well. You're not a better mother, partner, boss, colleague, or employee. Visualize yourself as a supercharged sports car. To keep the engine operating on a basic level, you can just use any old gasoline and oil. But no one would argue that this is a waste of a perfectly good sports car. To drastically boost the car's performance and longevity, 
you must provide regular tune-ups, top-of-the-line parts, and plenty of TLC. It may seem counterintuitive, but being selfish can help you become a better person and cope with all of your demanding tasks. It took me a long time to establish the appropriate balance, and I still get into the habit of attempting to do everything at once. I've discovered that I really need to take some time away from my hectic schedule and focus on me. All right, so I'm going to stop there. And if you noticed, I have a little bit of a rasp going on this morning. So every time that I cleared my throat or every time that I, you know, had some sort of a boo-boo or issue, I clicked my clicker. So I marked that spot to go back and edit out later. And also, if you noticed while I was reading, there were uh, good opportunities uh, with a comma to stop and take a breath, which I'm very thankful for. Because as narrators, one thing that we must learn to do and do effectively, especially if a sentence doesn't have any kind of real punctuation, is to find a spot in that very long sentence to take a breath, right? And I always say that a small natural breath is not very distracting. I actually like it because it shows me uh, that a human is reading this story to me. And it's a human thing to take a breath. Now, big gulping breaths, you know, big fish breaths. <gasps> not that anybody actually does that, but you know what I mean. If it's a big distracting breath, edit that out. But if it's a small natural breath, as I did a few times throughout this read, those are perfectly fine in my opinion. I very rarely have an author tell me that they want me to remove all the breaths. Now, generally, I remove probably most of them because I've taught myself to take shallow, quick breaths, which aren't very distracting. But all of that just comes with practice, right? What do I always say? Just do it. Just practice. Just get in there. Just get started, right? So reading books to your child, reading books aloud to yourself, all of these things, even listening to audiobooks is very, very helpful and educational, listening to other narrators and how they approach long sentences, even though sometimes you can't even tell it's, you know, maybe a long sentence. They break it in such a way that it makes it sound like two sentences, but it's very natural, right? So listen to audiobooks yourself and, you know, get a feel for how things are delivered in terms of, in terms of, you know, a vocal delivery. Is this still recording? Yeah, this is still recording. Oh, geez, I'm gonna have to edit all that out. But but with practice, you'll come to find uh, those areas or those sections and sentences where it might be feasible to stop and take a small breath without being too distracting or taking away from what the sentence is trying to convey, if that makes sense. So now that we have our audio file from reading that small section, section of that chapter, um, I'm going to have to cut out all of the blah blahs <laughs> that I recorded after I was done because I forgot to stop the recording. So I'm going to do that really quick and just cut out the sections that we don't need. And then we'll get into editing this uh, this piece. OK, I went through and I removed all of the talking blah blah. So let's go ahead and actually I got to put my ears back on. OK, I got my ears on. So let's go ahead and get this edited now. OK, let me grab my clicker. Okay, that was stuff that needs to be removed, so I'm going to edit that out. All right, so before I go any further with editing out mistakes, I'm going to add some of my processes, meaning some of the effects to reduce the noise, to add the EQ, reduce some of the mouth clicks that we as humans are all plagued with. Me, I am plagued with uh, a sticky mouth. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much I hydrate or what I do, it's still got clicks. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these. And what I do over here in my rack, I have a I have a preset that I've actually gone through a, a few different evolutions of my audiobook rack. So this one is called Audiobook 2. But if I click on this, it's going to pull up the effects that I want applied for this particular preset. And setting a preset is really easy. Once you have all the effects over here in your rack that you want to use, 
then you just simply hit this little save effects rack as a preset. And once you hit that, you just name it whatever you want to name it, click OK, and that saves your rack for you in this dropdown of presets. Super easy. So what I have over here in my rack, I have a few other things that are in here that I use on occasion, but not necessarily all the time. My basics, I have five basics that I have for most of my voiceovers and for my audiobooks. Now, the, the first one is a noise remover, because first you want to remove the bad stuff before you add in the good stuff, right? So first we're going to do, I have my NS1 Mono, and NS1 is one of the best plugins that I've worked with to reduce or remove background noise. I don't have a lot in here, but there is a very subtle hum from my computer tower, the fans, that are just outside of my studio. So I, from here, I can edit the effect if there's a little bit more noise than usual, but I'm going to leave it where it's at for right now because I need to comply. It's perfectly set to comply with ACX's noise floor standards, which is why it's set as an audiobook preset. It's perfectly set for audiobooks and audiobooks alone. So then the next one I have is the RX-7 Isotope uh, RX-7 Mouth Declick. And this one also is one of my favorite plugins of all time because it removes all of those mouth noise clicks. It's amazing. It's cut my editing time in half, if not more. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And then the next one is Deplosive, also from Isotope Elements. Um, because even though my mic is off access, I'm not talking directly into it. I, if I have like, if I say like a P or a T, usually you have that, you know, that puff of air that comes out with those letters. They're called plosives. And with my mic just off access, and even with my pop filter here to help reduce, to disperse the air, every once in a while, a little plosive gets in there. So I have this on very light to reduce any plosives that make it through and not heavy enough to reduce the, the, the sound of the letters that are supposed to be there. So it's very light. And then the next one I have is my parametric equalizer, which I had uh, the legendary Tim Tippett's create for me. Uh, this is um, a very light EQ. I had him help me with this because I got to that point where I just could not do the trial and error anymore. So I asked him if he could, and of course I paid him for his services, but he made a preset for me, which has been awesome. So thank you very much, Tim. Uh, the next one down is uh, CLA Vocals, and I used this one because it has, um, I like just a little bit more bass to my voice. So CLA Vocals is really, really useful. However, I only use uh, three of these. I only use a little bit of bass, a little bit of treble, and then a little bit of compression also. I don't have a ton of modulation. You can see from my waveform, it's not really all over the place. It's pretty uniform in volume, right? So a little bit of compression will help to keep those a little bit... Um, you know, the peaks and the lows a little bit closer together, which is also something that ACX looks at in terms of RMS later on, but I'll show you that. So I'm going to apply these effects. I'm going to hit apply. Okay, so I've got my rack applied. Now the next thing I'm going to do before I normalize or anything, because that is an all, another question that I get a lot about, at what point do you normalize to negative 3 dB? That is actually the last thing that I do before checking all of the levels for RMS and, you know, making sure that everything is correct. That's the last thing I do. So, because, and I say that because if you were to normalize before you edit, that normalization is going to be based upon what is currently here in terms of modulation and volume, right? If you remove some of those sections, then it's going to be, it's not going to be normalized to negative 3 dB anymore and you run the risk of having your RMS way off, Right. So normalization and then checking for your RMS is the last thing that I do. Once the file is, you know, it has its uh, rack and its effects done, the editing is done, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is what I want to normalize. I don't want to normalize the stuff that is coming out. You know what I mean? So let's move on. Okay, so now I'm going to put my ears back on. And now we are going to edit this puppy. So... For ACX standards, the head of your file, which is the very beginning, 
there should be room tone of between half a second and a second, meaning your narration, where you start talking, needs to fall between those two points. It needs to fall between 0.5 and 1 second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the room tone that I have from this spot where there's no narration, and using my little duration ticker over here, showing me how big my selection is in time, I'm going to select a half a second, roughly, of room tone. So I'm going to copy this, and just so I have it for later, because we're going to need to use this room tone to fill in or to paste over some breaths and or to help fill in some spots that need some more room or some more uh, of a longer pause. I'll show you what I mean. But for right now, my head, the head of this file, it looks, I can see there's a little bit of noise down here. So what I'm going to do just to test it is I'm going to highlight this section here and I'm going to play it. And I have a volume level bar down here. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. But I have negative 60 dB right here, right where my cursor is at. And that is the threshold that you cannot eclipse in terms of noise floor for ACX. So I cannot have anything for room tone go above negative 60. So watching this level bar here, I'm going to play this section of room tone to make sure that it does not eclipse negative 60. So let's play this now. And it looks like it goes just a hair over negative 60, but I think I know what it is. It's this little, this little bit of noise right here. So I'm going to take my healing brush. Whoops. And then I'm just going to smooth over that to get rid of that little bit of noise. Now I'm going to test it again. See, now it doesn't even eclipse. It's barely at negative 60, so I know that it passes for ACX. All right, so now I'm going to just listen through and make some adjustments to the editing. This should be the chapter name. Chapter 3, Taking a Break. And it is. So after the chapter title, I'm going to add in a second, roughly, of room tone. Actually, let's do a second and a half. Because the chapter title should have a little bit of pause between the title and the body of the chapter. Now, I'm going to leave a little bit of a pause here. It's me talking. I should have taken that out. But I will in... Okay, where do we start this actual narration? As a working mother. Right there. Okay, so to remove this section of me just talking blah, blah, I'm going to select or put my cursor at the beginning of what I want to remove. And then just highlight it. And we're going to roll over here. Let's see, where was I? I think that was right here. And if you want to be sure before you delete it, if I scroll back out here to zoom and I hit play, it'll play the selected piece so I can make sure that this is what I want to delete before I delete it. Now, I'm going to leave a little bit of a pause here after the... Okay, so I'm going to delete that. And this should be the beginning of the chapter. As a working mother, you usually don't have much time to pamper yourself. There's always one... Okay, so this pause between the sentences is a little long. So I'm going to paste in that half second of room tone that we copied earlier. There's always one more thing to do. One final email. One more load of laundry. A few more errands. Okay, end of the sentence. So I'm going to add in... That half a second, and you don't have to use exactly a half a second. You could use, you know, uh, three quarters of a second. You know, if you want to do, to, if you wanted to copy, you know, point uh, six nine or point seven zero zero seconds, and use that for your space between your sentences, you could do that as well. Just don't make it overly long. You know, don't go over a second. I think between sentences. When you strive to do everything, you can end up wearing yourself out. Okay, so I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm going to copy for between the sentences. Oops, I need to fix my panels here. Reduce the size of my volume bar so I can, there we go. 
Okay, so this selection is 0.557. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Let's go, yeah, it looks good, 684. So I'm gonna copy that and then use this uh, amount of rune tone to, to insert between my sentences. Funny thing is, you don't end up doing anything particularly well. Okay, so I can see that there's a mistake right here. I used my clicker right here, I can see it. So I'm gonna play this this redo, the start of the redo, to see what this is replacing. Visualize your... Okay, so let's see. Where did I start saying visualize? Partner, colleague, or employee. Nowhere. So I'm not sure why I did a clicker here, but it's not replacing anything. So I'm just going to get rid of this noise here and replace it with a little bit of room tone. Visualize yourself as a supercharged sports car. To keep the engine operating on a basic level... You can just use any old gasoline and oil. But no one well, room But tone. no one would argue that this is a waste of a perfectly good sports car. Room tone. To drastically boost the car's performance and longevity, you must provide regular tune-ups, top-of-the-line parts, and plenty of TLC. It may seem counterintuitive. All right, so I'm not sure why I clicked here. Maybe it was because of the breath, but there was another breath here. You can actually visually see this breath here. So I'm going to, was this the middle of a sentence? You must provide regular tune-ups, top of the line parts. It was. So I'm going to get rid of this breath in between. This is pretty much where the comma was in the sentence. So I'm going to shorten up this gap here and get rid of the breath by just deleting it and some of the space around it. Tune-ups top-of-the-line parts, and plenty of TLC. And then I know this was the start of a new sentence here, so I'm going to insert some room tone. Help you become a better person and cope with all of... That was definitely a comma in the middle of a sentence. So the same thing as before, I'm just going to highlight that breath and then a little bit additional room tone to kind of tighten that up a little bit and cope with all of your demanding tasks. It took me a long time to establish the appropriate balance. And I still get in... Okay, again, I took a breath at a comma, so I'm going to remove that breath and a little bit of room tone in between. Balance. And I still get into the habit of attempting to do everything at once. Okay, this is the end of a sentence, start of a new... I'm going to insert some room tone. I've discovered that I really need to take some time away from my hectic schedule and focus on me. Okay, so this is the end of the file. So if this were... Come here, Nat. So if this were uh, the end of the file, the actual file, we're going to pretend that it is, this would be the tail of the file. And the tail needs to have between one second and five seconds of room tone. So taking that room tone that we copied, that we've been using in between sentences, I'm just going to insert that over the, the end of my file. And then just keep doing so until I reach the appropriate amount of time of room tone. So if I highlight this, and looking at my selection duration down here, I've got just a hair over two seconds of room tone. So I'm going to add one more. So that should be about 2.6, 2.7, yeah, 2.753. So that is generally what I insert for the end of a file. And you want to keep that amount of time for each file. So, for example, if I have on this file 2.7 seconds of room tone at the end of this file, you want to keep that pretty much consistent. It doesn't have to be exact, but keep it pretty much consistent file to file to file. So... For example, if you're listening to the audiobook, this audiobook, your listener is going to go from chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And if you don't keep these consistent, it's going to be a shorter pause after chapter one, a longer pause after chapter two. It's going to be a little disconcerting. It's going to be a little bit confusing. And you don't want to do that. You want to make this a smooth, easy listening experience for your audiobook listeners. I hope that makes sense. So keeping the amount of time at the tail consistent from file to file to file is highly recommended. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, just roughly the same amount of time. Don't go from 
one and a half seconds to four seconds on the next file, right? Okay. Okay, so now that we have this all edited, we have applied our basic rack, the, the um, NS1 for background noise removal, and then we have a little bit of EQ, we have a deplosive, a demouth click, and we have edited out all of the retakes and breaths that we want to take out. The room tone at the head and the tail of the file are correct. Now, the last thing to do is to normalize to negative 3 dB, and then we'll check it to make sure that this file will pass for ACX standards. So I have my normalization to negative 3 dB on a hotkey on my keyboard. So I'm going to hit that and apply it. Now to check to make sure that my RMS levels are correct for uh, ACX, I'm going to go over to my rack and right next to it is my amplitude statistics. And if you don't have this on this panel here on Adobe Audition, if you go up to window and you select, if you check amplitude statistics and then drag it, you know, once it opens in its own panel, drag it over. Whoops, I just unclicked it. Hang on. You just drag it over to this panel and then it'll add it to this panel for you. Like I've got properties here, batch process. I've got a few different uh, processes that I have in this particular panel. So amplitude statistics. So from here, I want to make sure that the file is highlighted because this is what I want to test. And then you hit scan selection. And after that is done processing, the two numbers that you want to look at is your peak amplitude, which should be negative 3 dB or lower, which keep in mind that negatives, the negative numbers, the smaller the number is, the louder it is. So you want to be at negative 3 dB or lower. For example, negative 3.1 dB would be lower than negative 3 dB. I hope that makes sense. And the other number that you want to look at is total RMS amplitude. And this, this file is at negative 19.11 dB, which falls within ACX's range of negative 18 to negative 23 dB. So this file is in compliance for ACX. So we have the proper noise floor. It's lower than negative 60. Even after normalization, it should still be pretty low. So let's test that really quick. So if I select this room tone that we pasted in earlier, after normalization, it's going to lift the volume a bit, right? So let's test this. Okay, as we can see, it's not even going up over negative 68 or it's somewhere between negative 69 and negative 68. So this will work for uh, ACX's standards. So there we go. And then after your file is complete, the next thing you're going to do is once you have all of your files done and they're all ACX compliant, they're all set to the proper standards, then you want to send those files to your client or upload them if you are producing through ACX, upload them to their appropriate spots on ACX. And then after that, you just wait to hear if A, the rights holder is happy with your narration, and B, if ACX or whomever the distributor is, is happy with your files uh, compliance, if your standards are in line with their, their standards on their, um, for the audio files. So, that is it for this video. I hope that answers a bunch of questions for you. I just kind of did a quick run through of narrating an audiobook for ACX and other distributors. Um, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate that. And if you have any other questions regarding uh, voiceover or audiobook narrating in general, please feel free to leave them down below. I create my videos answering your questions. So if you have a burning question, please leave it down below. If you want to find out any more about me, my work, or how I can help you get started in voiceover or audiobook narration, please check out my website, voiceoverangela.com. Thank you so much as always for your time, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.